systems. And it is true that intrusion detection systems today are better than they ever were before, but they really are still subject to certain limitations. Number one, something called a correct detection rate or a hit rate. And what a hit rate means is that when an attack really happens, what percentage of the time does the intrusion detection tool report that attack? And perhaps even worse, unacceptably high false alarm rates. And if you look at the false alarm rates of today's tool, that means that the tool said that there was an incident, but there was no incident. And this is costly in terms of frustration to technical staff. This is costly in terms of in, in investigations that get initiated that don't have to be initiated in the first place. And false alarm rates are just plain everyday annoying. So if you look at the efficiency of an intrusion detection system, the intrusion detection system can either have the output that said an attack occurred or that no attack occurred. If an attack occurred and the output said, yes, the attack occurred, then you have a correct detection. But if an attack occurred and your intrusion detection system missed it, then you have what's called a miss. And if the attack did not occur, but your intrusion detection system flagged the attack, you have a false alarm. If you have an attack that did not occur, but the, the intrusion detection system did not report anything, then you have a correct rejection. And then, now the tricky part is how to actually calculate how good the intrusion detection system is. And some of you have an engineering background and you're very familiar with something called signal detection theory. And signal detection theory will come up with a distribution of all points in which some event has occurred in which there has been signal plus noise versus the distribution of events where noise alone has occurred. And the separation of the means of these two Gaussian distributions would signify how good intrusion detection is. So if signal plus noise was approximately the same as noise, you would have an intrusion detection system that was almost worthless. But the further apart the two distributions become, the better the intrusion detection system. Lately in computer science, the favored method of determining the efficiency of an intrusion detection system is Bayesian intrusion detection rate. And for those of you who know something about Bayes' theorem, which is probably just about every one of you, you know he was a theologian that did great math in England. And Bayesian inference really just tells you what the probability of one event given that another event has occurred. And in fact, the formula is the probability of A given B equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A, all that divided by this lower, this denominator term, the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given not A times the probability of not A. Now, I'm not here to talk about mathematics with you so much, but just to say that the Bayesian detection rate can be rather readily calculated because let's suppose that we have an event that's uh, L sub I, and that's that an attack has occurred. That symbolizes that an attack really has occurred. And I'm sorry, uh, I, I sub I, that an attack has occurred, and that I sub J means that, nope, there is no attack. This is normal network behavior. A sub I means an alarm has occurred, occurred, and A sub J means no alarm whatsoever has occurred. You could calculate the Bayesian detection rate by using the formula here. I won't read it to you because it would be a little bit monotonous, but the intrusion detection, the Bayesian detection rates are regularly calculated for the major kinds of intrusion detection tools out there. And if you'd like to have the bad news, there are very few tools that get Bayesian detection rates of about 0 0.80. 0 is kind of the upper limit for calculated Bayesian detection rates. Some of the worst tools get Bayesian detection rates of about 0.47. That's, for instance, SRI's Emerald tool scores about 0.47. If you use Snort and you don't tune it, and get some of the old-fashioned signatures out of its signature library, you'll end up with a lower rate along that way. And most commercial tools score somewhere between about 0.60 and 0.80, and a lot of tools that aren't really used much commercially score lower than that because they haven't been as thoroughly tested. And the point I'm trying to make is that intrusion detection is good. I'd rather have an intrusion detection, Bayesian detection rate of 0.80 than not have anything at all. I'd rather have 0.70 than not anything at all. But there are other pieces of information about attacks that can be very worthwhile. And for instance, your router is going to have logs. Chances are that will give you valuable pieces of information. Your firewall 
Actually, if you ever take a SANS course, they will tell you that the most single valuable source of information about attacks on the network is your firewalls. So why don't people look at their firewall data? Because they're not crazy, right? Anybody ever looked at firewall data and will admit it? Oh my goodness, okay. There, there's special therapy available for people like you. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's monot I mean, how did you do it? I mean, how long did you do it, I should say? Uh, long enough to get a paper published. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then there's also, of course, your network and your host-based intrusion detection systems. Your web servers will have logs. Your FTP servers will have their own application logs. There's actually a lot of places on the network you can look. Plus, individual hosts will have their logs. Windows systems don't have great logs, but if you know about event logging, they can give you those data. And Unix systems have pretty darn good logs. You know, if those of you know Unix, you know there's UTEMP, and there's WTEMP, and then if you're really lucky, you might have other ones that show you things like um, which particular commands were executed at which particular time and so on. And so all these can provide a source of data about what's happening as far as the security of your network. But you run into the immediate barrier. There's too much of these, these data to be able to process. And the volume really can be so great that it's impossible to look at. And I take my hat off to you for, for looking at that volume of data. You can have, you know, just typically like for a network, maybe like, oh, the ECN network here at Purdue or something like that, you'd expect at least one to eight gigs gigabytes of data for every day from a single network. And most of this output is going to be something called syslog. And syslog is system logging. It's going to come out of your intrusion detection devices. It's going to, most of them, it's going to come from your firewalls. It's going to come from your individual hosts. But there really are way too much uh, pieces of information for you to really read and digest. And then also, by the time you're looking at these data, you're already way behind the power curve as far as being in near real time. And then, of course, what are you going to do with the data after you're through with it? Somehow you've got to archive it. And archiving these data can, can really be a problem. I mean, I'm telling you that easily, if you just calculate the simple mathematics of 8 gig gigabytes of data that are coming through every day, after a while, you're going to need some major disk storage space or a storage area network to be able to place these data in so that you can get to them again if you need to. So solution number one is called data aggregation. And data aggregation basically means gathering data from different sources into one place so that at least you can see them from a single console. And so normally, for instance, when you configure a Unix system in, in you know the file, etsysyslog.conf, and you're configuring etsysyslog.conf to send certain levels of priority of syslog data over to certain IP addresses, normally you send to a central console so that you can see all the data there at a single place. And that helps to, at least to some degree. You can also do that with other kinds of intrusion detection data if the device doesn't use syslog. But event correlation, which is not the same as data aggregation, goes further. Because what event correlation means is that you have numerous different security related events and you combine them to get a picture of what's really happening when there is an incident. In fact, what you're really trying to do is fuse the data so that you come up with one conclusion about whether was this a security related breach or not. What you have to do here is you have to have multiple pieces of data, multiple events, multiple syslog messages, multiple types of other kinds of output, in which you have things like the source IP address, who originated the traffic, the destination IP address, who was potentially attacked, what network routes were taken in attacking or at least launching this traffic, what type of attack does this appear to be. And a lot of people don't realize that when we look for attacks on the network, we always think of hacker attacks. And they're, they're serious and they're bad and nobody likes them. But a lot of people don't realize that about 43% of all internet attacks, according to the Search CC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, are denial of service attacks where people are just trying to bring things down. What kind of malware? was placed on systems that were victimized. What time did the activity begin and what time did it end? That is so important. And by the way, if you don't have the clocks right on the sensor devices, correlation doesn't work right. you got to make sure, and one of the first tricks of a bad person, if they break into a system 
will be to 